Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. I can say this this time as well. I have something from Westland. Westland Guyana Edition number five. Ooh. All right. So I have only had a very few um, bottlings from Westland. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this bottle here. Put the packaging beside it. It's a very poppy color, right? So I've opened this already. So we have the nice little capsule here. And then I went like this. And it was like, it doesn't work. Oh, it's a screw top. This is a $150 bottle and it's a screw top. I guess you can do that, right? So who knows? All right. So now before I move on here, I need to explain a little bit about Garyana Oak. Now, there are certain things in the world that we normally use for our casks. One of them is going to be Quercus Alba. That's called white oak in Latin. Now, over in Europe, white oak doesn't grow. Quercus Alba, we have Quercus Robur, R-O-B-U-R. That's called European oak. So if you've ever had anything from French oak or Spanish oak or Hungarian oak, same type of trees, just different locations. And then you have something which we know as Mitsunara. Mitsunara is a Japanese oak, actually called Quercus, then Mongolia. And then there's this new crazy one that they started using, Chinkapin oak. Chinkapin is Quercus Mühlenbergle. So it's a little bit of a German name, Mühlenbergle. Sounds a little bit more like a um, Swiss version. And then, last but not least, this might be the question of the day, what other type of oak uh, species are used to actually um, make casks out of for whiskey? We have something called Quercus Geriana. Now, they call it Gary Oak. Gary Oak is very special because it grows just in the northwestern part of the United States. It used to be along somewhat from the coast from um, Washington down to California. Today, it's only, it's a very endangered species, very, very small area that it grows in. And so, um, Westland just uses the trees that have actually already died or are so-called hazardous trees, either a hazard to themselves or to other trees things, people, whatever, and they can cut them down. Now, um, they cut down the trees. I guess lumberjacks do that. They cut up uh, the section of the wood. And what we need as a cooper to build a barrel are, of course, staves. And the staves have to have straight grain. They can't have a twisted grain, and they have to have no knots. And so you need a certain segment of wood, about three uh, feet long, good meter and a certain thickness and a certain width, and then you can make staves out of that. I read that the uh, Krakos Geriana is a somewhat brittle wood, much more brittle than um, European or American oak. Now, the Westland Distillery have actually had good experiences using these casks made from Geriana oak, um, very little leakage, no massive leakage is what they wrote. And as long as you don't drop them on a concrete floor, they will not break due to that brittleness there. Now, the second thing that's important about Westland is they have different types of barley, barley they use. Now, I did not really say that correctly. They use different types of toasting for their barley. Now, what do I mean? They have pale malt barley. So you have to ferment. So malt the, the barley and you put that in water and you use heat and it starts to sprout and you stop the sprouting by adding heat and you can add the heat and it stops. Good. It's like using your toaster and putting it on the very, very lowest um, setting and it just gets a little warm, but it doesn't really turn brown. And then you can actually use something called Munich malt, where you turn it to about two or three, if it's a 10 setting, and it gets a light brown, where it's actually nice. They do have special malt that comes from Wisconsin, but they also use a so-called brown malt from the UK, which means you turn it up even more, and that malt is almost roasted like coffee beans. 
And then you even go um, to something called chocolate malt. And so they also have a chocolate pale malt that they use. So they have different yeast, they have different woods, they have different barley. Not the varietals themselves, but the toasting of those. So, and of course, they have peated malt as well as unpeated. Now, this itself is actually a mixture of 64% first fill ex bourbon Quercus Alba cask in which non peated whiskey was in. And it's 36% of virgin Quercus Geriana. And that was actually a UK heavily peated malt. Hmm. Age 45 um, months, which is great. We need to have three um, years over here to be called whiskey. Otherwise, it's just a spirit. And there were a total of 5,625 bottles. You have 750 and 700 milliliter bottles. Now, according to what I've seen, the Westland Guerriana Edition 6 comes out once a year was only released in a 700 milliliter bottle. Hmm. Think of the new um, Jack Daniel bottles that are also 700 milliliters. So this is good because you have one bottle that, si that size fits everyone all over the world. And it's always been a pain in my butt to have 750 and 700 milliliter bottles and not be able to actually sell those in the different uh, markets there. So finally, finally, we're working on that. Good. The last fact that I would like to add here is uh, what do Bruchladi and Westland have in common? You know, the island distillery? It's very simple. The exact same owners. The French company called Remé Contra. And um, Westland was founded 2010 by master distiller Matt Hoffman and together with his buddy um, Emerson Lamb. 2015, five years later, it was named the um, Whiskey of the Year. 2016, it was the World Craft Producer. 2018, um, master distiller Malt Hoffman was named American Distiller. Uh, Master Distiller of the Year by Icons of Whiskey, and the Westlands Guariana 3 uh, actually won the American Single Malt Whiskey of the Year Award in um, 2019. So, very, very interesting things going on here. Now, I almost always compare my whiskeys, and I'm going to do this as well. What do I have? I have not Westland, I have West Ward. This is an American Single Malt Whiskey, 45%, and this is from Oregon. So a little bit down the street, I have a little bit left here from my German video, please um, accept my apologies for not pouring a new pour here. And I'd just like to compare the two, 150 dollars, euros, this is about 69. Now on the nose, the very, very first time I, I smelled this, I did not get that heavily peated third of the whiskey, but now I do. For me, it's a little bit of a um, coal dust powder moment. Now, I've actually described this whiskey as the following. Take a nice little pot, put about a teaspoon of coal dust in there, take a couple, um, couple uh, a few cups of um, like porridge, Take um, a couple tablespoons of honey, take a couple tablespoons of corn syrup, and then take bark from an oak tree and grind it up to powder and put another teaspoon of that in here. Cook, slowly stir, and then try. And that's basically the type of moment I'm getting here. I think I've named all the different tasting notes. The wood element is strong with this one. I think it's going to be the Guerriana. Now, they actually, on one of the websites I read, they said that we have now, or they have now, ex um, refilled the first virgin um, Guerriana. This was the virgin Guerriana oak. And they've refilled those and had much better results. It's like a tea bag. The first time is a little bit too much. The second time, just right. 
Um, or like a cask if you're going to make single malt whiskey. The first one, let the bourbons take out all that stuff you don't want and then leave it a little bit longer for your single malt. If I don't care if it's in Ireland, Scotland, or America. And um, so they hope to actually be able to use these casks the third time. And then they might actually rejuvenate them. I don't know if that means just retoasting them or are they charred? I don't know. Didn't find any information on the the casks, what they how they did that. All right. Now this whiskey is a whiskey where you should have your big boy pants on. Not because of the 50% ABV. This is 45, this is 50. This is actually a little bit more alcohol forward than this. It's not the alcohol. This is so intense, concentrated. boiled down flavors that it almost overwhelms my palate, me. If the whiskey's too strong, I'm usually too weak. And that's my problem here. This is a whiskey that I respect <laughs> because it just overpowers. It blows out my, my taste buds fairly quickly. Some whiskeys are very, very um, fragile, almost a little delicate, like those. Mm. Some are nice, and then others are so in your face that it's like, I can't hear anything else. And that's what I'm getting here. All right. Cheers. And I also get a little bit of apple juice with cinnamon. So instead of pouring water in there, pour in my, my pan um, the apple juice and put a little bit of cinnamon on there. Cheers. Mm-hmm. What kind of surprises me positively is the mouthfeel. This has a tremendous oiliness to it. It's thick, it's coating, it's mouth coating. It's very, very nice. There is a, sh there is a deep, dark brown sugar moment in this. There's that a little bit of oak powder. There's a little bit of that coal powder and on top of that there's a little bit of like a dark cocoa moment almost like a dark chocolate it's it's rich it's thick it's overwhelming it's almost a tiny little bit bitter very very interesting and very challenging whiskey at the same time so what i'm going to do not three drops i'm going to dilute this whiskey down to about 25 to 30 percent why now on my video i just did a moment ago in germany for my german audience i diluted it down to about 40 43 percent it just got sweet there was a sweetness and there was a woodiness and there was a little bit of that cold moment at the end. It didn't change it. I'm going to hope that I might get behind some of those notes and find something else here at this much, much lower proof. The entire time it almost smells like a spring bank. It almost smells like a hazel burn to be more, ex more honest, like an overly oaked hazel burn. Springbank, somewhere in between. I sometimes get peat and hazel burn, which they say they, of course, don't do. And um, I think some of the faint receivers do have some of that peatedness left over. Mm It still amazes me the concentration of flavors. The first time I got raisins now, it's got a slight funky hydrocarbon moment going on there. It's not like a machine oil. It's more like that, almost, almost like a crude oil moment. I don't know if you've ever been on like a container ship or a big ship and they use that heavy, heavy crude oil. 
and it just permeates the entire ship and that smell. A little bit, that's what I'm getting here. There's a sweetness plus a, this oakiness, which is a weird sandalwood type of intensity. And there's also this herbalness. And that herb is something I can't really put my finger on here. This is funky, weird, interesting, challenging, out of my comfort zone whiskey where I go, oh, this needs more time. I've had this in my glass now twice. I've spent 30, 40 minutes with this in total. And I'm still a little overwhelmed with this. I am going to give this for the flavor profile as it's so unique. It's going to be one of those weirdo moments. Um, no one else in the world uses at the moment that I know of um, Gariana Oak for whiskey. Westland is the only person in, or the only company in the world. I'm going to give this a C to C plus. Is it bad? No. Is it weird? Yes. Is it overpowering? Yes. But I think the whiskey has its attributes. I'm just not at the moment during my whiskey journey at that point to appreciate them as I could or should. Value for money, D. Now, um, this is not something I'm going to go out and rebuy. This is something which is extremely special. Um, I've had quite a few at the moment, chinkapins. I've had my share of Mitsunara. But this is the first time I've actually had um, Gariana. And that's special. And therefore, this is something for a specialist. This is not something I'm going to go, hey, you should go buy this because this is a great value for money and the taste is out of this world. This is something that if you're a fan of the distillery, if you're um, someone who's going out there and looking for something totally unique, ta-da! But this is not something I can recommend based on a value for money point. All right. So what tree did I miss? Krakos Alba, Krakos Roboa, Krakos Mon Mongolia, Krakos um, Mühlenbergli, and then Krakos Geriana. What wood do you know of that is used for casks? Second question of the day. What other West Coast distillery can you recommend? Now, westward is a weird, funky moment here, uh, especially when I go from here. It's a very, it's a lot of caramel. It's a little bit of a butterscotch type of licorice, which I've never had, but that's what I'm getting. And there's a flowery, floral moment going on there as well. 45%. Single malt, 100% malted barley, 100% malted barley. That is weird. Not the best of friends here. The alcohol, a little bit more present. This is not the alcohol. This is the intensity of flavors that really just overwhelm me. I'm repeating myself. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you very much, maybe even for telling a friend about this crazy guy over here in Europe, in Germany, tasting whiskeys you might not ever see. All the best. Bye-bye.